It's quite a big landmark moment, a landmark uh, proposal by the European Commission. We've been waiting for it uh, for a few weeks now. There have been some grumblings and some grumpiness uh, within uh, European circles and European officials about the Inflation Reduction Act, about uh, bigger investment coming from China into their green industry, and very much uh, waiting for Europe's response. And this is the kind of first uh, breaking of ground when it comes to this proposal. Ursula von der Leyen this morning announcing uh, those broad strokes. As you said, uh, loosening of state aid rules that would allow countries to invest more heavily in their national industries, especially when it comes to green infrastructure. For example, uh, Denmark will be able to spend more money on its uh, uh, wind farm production and other uh, technolo technological advancements. We know that the German in uh, energy industry will also uh, possibly benefit from this. So these individual countries will be able to spend more uh, public money on boosting those industries, matching or at least uh, trying to compete with what we've seen in the United States. That's one element of it. And as you said, loosening those rules, Ursula von der Leyen saying, let's cut red tape in a press conference earlier today uh, saying that it needs to be easier for green industry to be able to uh, move forward and approve and, and adding that faster approval of green projects and as well boosting skills making sure that that workforce is there for that growing industry let's make sure there's a workforce to match it as well but the big uh, one of the big announcements was the repurposing of EU funds so taking uh, money for example from repower EU that was the big plan from the European Union announced in March to uh, uh, offset the loss of, of Russian fossil fuels following the invasion of Ukraine. So that was money that is still around that's going to be reused to boost uh, the green industry. Let's listen to what Ursula von der Leyen had to say earlier today about that repurposing of funds. For this, we will enable and encourage the member states to use the money from Repower EU, for example, with, for tax breaks to the net zero uh, industry because this mirrors then the speed, the predictability and the tar targeted uh, way forward as we see, uh, for example, from competitors. So that's really what the European Union wants to do. They want to encourage member states to increase that investment in green technology and green industries. Obviously, the EU itself, unlike China, unlike the US, is not a national government. So it doesn't have as many direct levers to pull to make sure that these things happen. It doesn't have a, a business department that will directly impact uh, what those decisions look like on the ground. But what it does have is rules and money. And it's going to increase the money for this and loosen the rules uh, for member states to be able uh, to make their own decisions and boost the green economy in Europe. Alex, not everyone is happy with this uh, rosy green roadmap. Yeah, rosy green roadmap and not everyone happy. That's to be expected. Obviously, this is a plan that's supposed to work for 27 different member states, and they will all have competing interests, and they all will have different perspectives on this. Now, we saw earlier when this, uh, when this plan was uh, previewed, when we knew that this plan was coming, uh, uh, seven different countries writing a letter saying, look, let's make sure we don't borrow more money to fund it. We want to be really careful with the amount of uh, money that the European Union is borrowing or the bloc is borrowing as a whole. Uh, not signatories to that letter were the Dutch, the Belgians and the Germans, obviously key players. The other concern with uh, uh, a lot of these member states is that, well, big economies like France and Germany will have the economic firepower to spend a lot of money boosting their green industries. We know, uh, for example, that the French and the Germans have a lot of investment in renewables or a lot of investment, certainly for the French, in nuclear. And so they'll have a lot more firepower than smaller countries, say, like Malta or Cyprus or uh, some of the smaller countries in Eastern Europe. And there's a, a real desire from those countries to say, well, look, let's make sure we don't get priced out of our own European market and Ursula von der Leyen trying to address those concerns by announcing a European sovereignty fund which will kind of balance out that, uh, that economic imbalance. But that will take a little bit of time and so obviously we'll see negotiations between member states and the European Commission uh, coming up in the, in the next few weeks. We've got a European Council uh, in just over 10 days and that will be a real key moment to see uh, how the heads of state resolve this. Now hopefully the European Commission, the European Commission is hopeful for a quick resolution but there are competing interests and we'll have to see uh, how those negotiations go moving forward.